Hi, so I'm going to be talking about how to manage conflict within a multidisciplinary team. So I have quite a bit of experience working in multidisciplinary teams, so I was really happy when someone in the Discord group asked a question about this um, and I'm just going to share some of my thoughts and also include a perspective that was shared by another social worker in the group. So the first thing really I'd say is that it can be intimidating when you're a lone voice in, within an MDT, uh, especially if these are sort of larger meetings and you feel like you are saying something that's going against the rest of the group. But I think what helps social workers in that situation is sort of having a vision for why you're saying the things you're saying. So a vision sort of bigger than yourself because um, that can take that perspective away. So sometimes I think about why am I in this room and I am a professional and we have a sort of re professional requirements and we're working within legislation. So we can sort of use that to say, well, Th there's nothing I can do about this. So a situation I've been in is where um, all the professionals have maybe not supported a decision that someone's made, uh, someone who's able to make decisions for themselves, so has the capacity to make decisions, wants to go home but there's a high level of risk uh, there and other professionals in the meeting did not want to sort of be involved with this because they were worried about if things go wrong this could go to court and they'd be implicated but actually our role is to sort of yeah we need to safeguard people where that's necessary people have a right to live free from abuse and neglect and um, people need to be supported to sort of manage the risks when they are there but we also equally need to protect people's rights for autonomy, self-determination, making their own decisions and we really need to be careful about taking the least restrictive approach and that means not restricting someone's right to freedom beyond what is absolutely necessary. I was involved with supporting someone where um, there was sort of sensory impairment and they were sort of doing things that would have been unsafe. So smoking whilst having hairspray and then not really being aware of what could happen. Um, and then also wanting to go home, there'd be periods where they would be on the, their own for a long time. And it's scary to think about what could happen. Um, but then it's about, well, who's best place to help manage this risk? The fire service maybe, so getting them involved. And it's about sort of, managing it so it would have been overly restrictive to say right well you can't go home because of this risk uh, you can't do that um when someone has the ability to make that decision what you need to do is try and find ways to manage it and help empower that person to do the things that are important to them a good thing that i find to think is that well-being is not just about physical well-being so people's need to be safe and sort of physically okay. So obviously people have basic human needs to have shelter and food and things like that, the basic provisions that everyone needs. But also people have a need in terms of their well-being um, to, to be happy and to feel like they have control over their life. And that's what it says in legislation. We need to balance those things. And I think that sometimes that's something that can be overlooked. I've been in situations where I've been in conflict with other professionals in a meeting because physical well-being has been prioritised above everything else and actually if people have no meaning in their life because they're not living their life the way they want to, they do not care about whether um, they can sort of have their basic needs met because they, they just, they're not happy and they're not feeling like there's any meaning in their life and I think that we all need that and that's why it's really important to actually understand what's important to people when we're having meetings because sometimes I've found that if I've had a conversation or done my assessment before I've gone into that setting and that meeting where it's about the person, even if they're not there, I feel like I, I know and I can advocate effectively for that person but best practice really is to have the person there or have an advocate to, to represent them if they're, they're not able to themselves or they've got no one um, available to support them. Another suggestion that was made by uh, someone in the Discord group is around sort of having follow-up meetings. So sometimes you may find that a meeting is just not going anywhere and um, people are sort of butting heads and sometimes taking the pressure off by thinking, right, we'll, we'll have a follow-up meeting 
can just sort of diffuse any um, disputes within there, give people a chance for a reflection. People may need to organise their thoughts and come back. Sometimes um, it's about finding more information or having another chat to the person that you're supporting outside of the meeting and then coming back. Sometimes you can even find solutions that will work um, and sometimes you can just be sort of talking and it's just not going anywhere within that setting and it's just time to, to sort of do that if you have time. So as always, subscribe if you found this video helpful.